Glory to God. We greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, we're going to stand up this moment and those who want. We're going to open up our Bibles and mark. Mark. Eight. Mark eight fourteen. Amen. The brethren are not. You don't have the Bible. You see here in the projection. And the word of the Lord says the following. And he. And he left him. No. And now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. And they did not have more than one loaf of with them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned amongst themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five love loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? Then said to him, Twelve. Also, when I broke the seven for the four thousand, how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said, Seven. So he said to them, How is it not, how is it you do not understand? Amen. Lord, we praise you. We ask you, Lord, that you you may give understanding regarding of what you want to do with amongst us tonight in our lives in our midst we plead to your blessing your presence we pray in the name of Jesus amen the church may be seated
Hello, Luis. And then they forgot to bring bread. Jesus had done recently a multiplication as for seven bread and fed and fed about 4,000 people. And after the people have been fed, there were seven baskets full of uh, fragments left. And the word says that Jesus called his disciples and they left that place and went to another place. In the other place, Jesus was not with the multitude, but he was surrounded by Pharisees. And the Pharisees, they went to meet Jesus because they wanted a sign from heaven. The Bible says that they went there to tempt Jesus. If we read the Bible, we'll notice that temptation is not from God. The enemy of our souls is the one who tempts us. In Jesus, he was tempted by the enemy. Is there in Matthew chapter 4, the temptation of Jesus. The enemy wanted Jesus to do turn a stone into bread. He wanted Jesus to jump, jump from the top of the temple. And what was the other one? And the word says that with the word, he reproached the enemy. And when the enemy was reproached, the Bible says that he left Jesus and the angels of God came and uh, took care of Jesus, catered to Jesus' needs. And the Pharisees, they wanted a sign from heaven. The uh, Bible says, my brother and sister, you who visit us, the faith is a firm foundation, is a proof of the things that are not seen. The Pharisee didn't have faith because the Pharisee wanted to first see before he could believe. And the Pharisee was such a, a person that had so little faith that they saw signs and wonders and still didn't, be, didn't believe. So they were not really interested in Jesus. They just wanted to see a sign from heaven. The sign of heaven put, would probably appear and they would still not believe in Jesus. Pharisee is a problem. So then Jesus said, oh, we cannot deal with these people. Man, I'm not going to operate any wonder here. They are not interested in blessing. What they want is to tempt me. This is uh, something that comes from the evil door. So then Jesus picked up his disciples and went to another part, another place. And while they were in this other place, the disciples, they remembered one thing. They said, uh, we forgot to bring bread. We forgot to bring bread. Sometimes our concerns and yours who are here today, it may be mine as well. It's always with bread. It's always with bread. The Bible says the following, my brethren. Many are the concerns of the just. But the Lord deliver them from deliver them from all of them. And it was just. It was fair that the disciples would be worried about their sustenance. You are us. We are all disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus. But many times our greatest concern is with our 
physical sustenance. And it is interesting that Jesus, in the beginning of the New Testament and also in Matthew, said the following, look to the birds of the heaven. They don't see, they don't sow, they don't harvest, they don't gather in a silo. So it's always concerned, always concerned with the bread. However, uh, our Father feed them. Don't you have, don't you have much greater worth than them, men of little faith? So the disciples forgot about the bread, but they also had little faith. And many times we are like this. The bread is absent and also the faith. And their concern was exactly this. Uh, what now? How are, we, how are we going to eat? How our need will be fulfilled? A uh, while before, Jesus had already done a miracle with bread, but that's how it is. God gives us a blessing today, tomorrow. There are other concerns. We forget what He had done in the previous day. His concerns if may even, even be fair. But Jesus says something that is very interesting. And I saw the just begging for bread and his descendants. Interesting that everybody's answering correctly. Glory to God. And I saw the just lacking anything and his descendants beg for bread. So then they forgot about the bread and to bring bread. And they were in a boat. In the boat there was Jesus and the disciples. And they forgot to bring bread. But then my bread, the Bible says the following that in, in the boat there was one bread. And the bread there was one bread. The boat signifies what? It signifies the work, the project of God. And in the project of God, how many breads are there? How many? One bread. And now I'm going to ask you, isn't it sufficient to have one bread? One bread, one bread isn't it sufficient? Church, is the bread, isn't it sufficient? Isn't a bread sufficient? There was one bread. Why are you worried, my brother? or sister, if uh, in your life there is one bread, if in your home there is one bread, it is, if it is in your environment at work, there is one bread. Oh, but I forgot. You may forget. I may forget. The mother may even forget about her son, but however, uh, your God will never forget about you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No disciple brought bread, but there was a bread there. No one here in this church brought a bread, but the bread is present. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know why there is a bread? Because Jesus knew that they need it. They will need something for their lives. And you know why the bread was present? Because He know, my brother and sister, you need His sustenance, His help, His support, His favor, His love, and His mercy. But Jesus has something interesting. He said, look and see. Look at me. Mira, like the Hispanic usually say. He says the following. Protect them from the leaven of the Pharisee and her. Jesus now turned the switched the the topic quickly, and we're going to switch the topic here as well. Jesus speaks of the leaven, the leaven of the Pharisees is the doctrine, and the disciples speak about about it. And later in the book of Luke, it says that the leaven is the hypocrisy. So be careful that the Pharisee 
may damage, destroy, deteriorate, ruin the plan, the project of God in your life. The Bible says that Jesus he looked at the Pharisee and said, Pharisee, you are a tomb that is painted white. On the outside, you have a good appearance, but inside, it's only bad things. The Pharisee, the Bible said Jesus used the parable of the publican and the Pharisee. The Pharisee went to the temple and said, I died. I fast, I pray, I'm a, cor uh, a righteous man, I'm not, I'm not like the publican there, I'm not like him. And Jesus said something interesting, that the Pharisees, they were not justified. The one who was justified was the publican, you know, because he said the following. Uh, the publican came to Jesus and said, have mercy on me. So the Pharisee didn't use of mercy because he thought he was righteous before the Lord. And Jesus said, be careful with the leaven of the Pharisees. The Pharisee, he was a deceitful man. He, he acted like he followed the law, but he didn't follow the law. He worried about the treasure, but didn't worry about the temple. He observed the law, but it, was, it didn't fulfill the law. Like we say in the Brazil, uh, it looks like a Christian, but he's not a Christian. Because he saw the signs, miracles and wonders and still didn't believe. Be careful with the leaven of the Pharisees. That's what Jesus said. God has a plan, a project for your life, for our lives. We are in the boat with Jesus. There is a bread on this boat, but be careful with the leaven that may come a Pharisee to turn turn around and mess up the project of God in your life. He also speaks of Herod. Herod was a killer. He was an assassin. He, he liked to kill Christians. Herod killed John the Baptist. He ordered to decapitate him. He also ordered to kill another Christian. James, yeah, he, he killed him by the sword. Herod was a man that believed that could serve the Lord and man. And Jesus says, you cannot serve two lords. Herod didn't give glory to God. So, my brother and sister, if you are in the boat with Jesus, if someone that comes that doesn't give glory to God, that, that one is Herod. He wants to kill the project of God in your life. He wants to destroy your faith. Herod was a persecutor of the church. He was a persecutor of Christians, persecutor of Christ. And the Bible says that Herod, he came into the temple with his uh, royal garments, and he began to give a speech. It's in the book of Acts. <coughs> no, Herod got dressed up in the royal robes. He wasn't in the court. He came as a, a judge and a king. And when, and when he began to speak, the people that was listening to Herod had a discernment. You know what the people said to her? Voice of God, not of man. The voice of God, not a voice of man. There are people that have appearance. They look like kings. They judge. So then I'll judge my brother because I'm a king. I'll judge my brother because I'm sitting on the throne. I have authority to do this. So Herod, 
He liked to judge and condemn others. That's all. But he f would forget about the, the bad things that he did. He had a illicit relationship with the, the wife of his brother. And, uh, and uh, to please the, uh, that, that woman, he cut off the head of John the Baptist. And you know what happened with Herod? He died. The angel of the Lord wounded Herod and he died being eaten up by worms and in my seating in the uh, service on Monday he opened up the service saying Herod didn't give glory to God and, ha and he was he died in by worms and the, you know what the church said glory to God glory to God nobody wanted to die and be eaten up by worms and there was no Herod there Amen. you need to have this to be careful in this way you need to give glory to God. This is the project of God for your life, my brother and sister. And you will find if someone comes to you like Herod, you will find out because he doesn't give glory to God. When you tell a blessing, the person gives glory to God. That one is from God. If you tell a blessing and he try to undo the project of God in your life, and this one is Herod. Oh, but the Lord has promised me that he's going to do a work in my life and in my home, in my work environment. That person comes and uh, comes to discourage you and make you feel like it's not going to happen. Uh, be careful. That one is Herod. And Jesus said this to the disciples. He didn't say this to the crowd. But Jesus said the following. Why do you argue that you don't have bread? But the concern continued to be that the, uh, the topic continued to be <laughs> about the bread. And then he says something interesting. Do not yet perceive nor understand. Is your heart still hardened? So, have you run out of faith you don't believe anymore don't you understand and many times we don't understand God is acting he's operating we're not lacking anything we still don't understand 40 years in the desert had, have they lacked anything in the desert nothing the Jewish people never lacked anything in the desert and Jesus and Jesus was present in the service at that time. And Jesus was really present. He was not hidden. He was present. He was in the midst of the disciples. And the concern was still with the things of this life, with their sustenance, with their bread. St. Jesus asked, You didn't understand? Can't you not understand the first miracle? My brethren, can't you not understand the first miracle of the multiplication of the bread? Can't you understand the second miracle of the multiplication of bread? Jesus also said, Don't you remember what I have done? We cannot forget of the things that God has done in our lives. We cannot forget of the things that we witnessed in the presence of God. <coughs> and Jesus said something like this. He said, don't you remember what I've done, my brother and sister? You who visit us here at the house of the Lord, don't you remember what God has done in our behalf, in our behalf, in our benefit? And he says, When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, what a miracle. With God. He had five bread and he fed 5,000. Why, why are we worried? How is it possible that a person with five loaves of bread can feed 5,000 people? Can you explain that to me? 
Isn't it something from God? Wasn't it God that has done a miracle? Was, was that a miracle? Of course, it was a miracle. My brother and sister, that was a miracle. Taking five loaves of bread and feeding 5,000, it's a miracle. And this type of miracle only God can do. Only operation of the Lord. And he was showing, I'm operating, I'm acting, I'm feeding, I'm su supplying to your needs. And he asked the disciples, and I'm going to ask you, my brethren, in the multiplication of bread, how many baskets were left? Twelve. Amen. Glory to God. Twelve baskets. How many disciples are, were there? Twelve. One was worthless out of the twelve, but they, he was still there. Twelve. But how many years? Are, how many months in the year? Twelve. So it's a basket for each month of the year. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're in the month of December. Have you lacked anything? No. Amen. Amen. So let's go to the second multiplication. And Jesus said, now also, and I broke the seven for, for the four thousand. How many large baskets full of fragments do you, you take up? Seven. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Seven days. Jesus says something interesting. I'm with you. I'm with you. Amen. My brethren, the bread that was in the boat is the bread of life. It's the living bread that came down from heaven. Let us pray. Our bread, our daily bread, give us, Lord, the Lord's prayer. Amen. You have not understood yet. My brother, are you worried with what? Jesus is present in your life. The, li the living bread, the bread that came down from heaven, the bread that gives life to men, our daily bread is giving you today, which is our God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord has shown in a spiritual vision a young woman. She served the Lord and she ended up stopped serving the Lord because she thought that she could not serve the Lord and, and doing the things that of answering to the desires of her life. And she thought that was, was not a problem. And now she has no strength to go back to the presence of the Lord. But tonight, the Lord is giving you, giving this young woman that is here with us a deliverance. They're giving her the means to go back to the presence of God. And God is telling this young woman, you are my beloved daughter. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God also has shown a woman and she was in, Bra in Brazil. She had received a word from the Lord all day back to in Brazil. The Lord spoke with this woman through the spiritual gifts. And was the Lord who spoke to her. It was not man, it was not Herod who said, it was not Pharisee who said, it was the Lord who spoke to her. But she is being she has doubt in her heart, heart if the prophecy that came that she received in Brazil is from the Lord. She has been going through difficult days here. And the Lord wants to tell us to tell this woman that the prophecy is mine. And I fulfill my word in your life. My brother and sister, if God has said it is, it is something that you need to believe, the, power, the word of God has power. But be careful with the leaven from the Pharisee and from Herod. 
people that have no commitment with the Lord may open up their mouth to attempt to destroy the project of God and remove the faith from your heart. And the Lord is saying to this woman, I've promised and I will fulfill my promise. Just remain in my presence and you will see my power. Amen. Now let us sing a song. Glory to Jesus. The church will stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. You have helped us unto this point, Lord. You have prospered us, Lord. You have blessed us, Lord. We want to bring to your heart, Lord. Glorify your name. Because your joy is our strength, Lord. We praise you because you're holy. Wonderful, Lord. There's no other beside you, Lord. We glorify you, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hold your name, God.
elements. We adore you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Glorify the Lord, your holy name, and that your grace has been enough for us because your presence is being constant, Lord, in our lives, in our midst, Lord. We adore you and praise you because you have helped us to this point, Lord. We have not lacked anything. You have answered to each one of our needs, Lord. We want to ask you that you may bless as we go back to our homes, delivering us and protecting us and giving us, Lord, an experience with you, Lord. Bless your people and church, the visitor who is here, so that they may all be uh, filled with your Holy Spirit. Receive our service, our praise, and adoration that we offer you in the name, of, holy name of Jesus. In the name you say, the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, a good eternal Father, sweet and eternal consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service has come to its end. You who came here tonight, we're going to say that you're uh, welcome to this place. We have service on Thursdays at 8 o'clock, a prayer. Uh, Tuesday, a um, doctrine now service at 8. Saturday at 7.30, a service. And also and Sunday morning, Sunday school at 10.30. Every Saturday uh, at 6 o'clock, uh, we have a uh, women's service. And we are, if you are a man, you are also invited because all service is open to the whole church. But this service is geared to the women. But if a man comes here, God does not choose a person of another. We will leave this place blessed in the same way. You are invited to participate also of this service at 6 o'clock every, every Saturday is a women's service. I would like to remind the church, you who visit us, that on the 31st, the service is going to be at 11 o'clock at night. It was going to be a, it's going to be a vigil. And the, the Lord is also inviting you to participate with us of this moment. You are welcome. You are already being invited by God and the church to participate with us on this vigil service. If you deserve prayer for your life, a clarification regarding of what was said or the spiritual gifts. Remain where you are, raise your hand, and one of the brethren here will give you the proper assistance. Um, you can, after the assistance, you, you are free to go home. Yeah,